Well, Chris, then explain to me what is the environmentalist argument against the, the thinning of the brush and the controlled burns that, that experts are saying would help prevent catastrophic, uh, catastrophic fires like this? What is the argument against it? Uh, we're supposed to limit our footprint on nature, which again, this flies in the face of that because you're ensuring a much bigger footprint and that man contributes to the fires this way, including by adding fuel in the form of houses. It's sort of like the argument that if you swim in the ocean and the shark comes after you, you shouldn't defend yourself because after all, you're in his backyard. That's the idea that we shouldn't trench, mm -hmm. we shouldn't allow fire breaks, we shouldn't allow clearing of the chaparral, the fuel. It doesn't make sense. But wealthy people are choosing to live in these areas, well, and this is what happens. Rick, let me ask you this. If our own congressional study points out here that these lawsuits, literally, as Pete Domenici said, that we're, because of them, we're literally managing wildfires uh, by having them. Why not have thinning? Why not have controlled burns if it would help assist and prevent catastrophes like this? Well, the important issue to remember a significant portion of the witch fire which went through San Diego County, a big portion of that had been burned four years ago. All right, but I didn't ask fires. you that. Why would environmentalists be against controlled burns and against thinning that our own government say would assist here, but yet lawsuits are preventing them from doing that? I don't know who the environmentalists are, but uh, in reference to science, the controlled burns and, and those things out in the backcountry, they really do not reduce the fuel enough to cause any kind of significant impact on whether there's going to be a big fire. These fires are not driven by fuel. They're driven by winds, and they stop when the wind stops, not when the fuel stops. Right, Chris That's and Rick, why it's, they went uh, through Alan these four-year fuels. Chris, I want to point out that one of the biggest environmental groups, the Sierra Club, uh, has long supported responsible fuel reduction around communities, and they fully support with a wildfire, exactly. a wildfire policy that makes community, community protection its top priority and they agree that removing brush and small trees immediately around homes and communities will help and save lives. So, you know, you're, to make a blanket statement that these environmentalists will not do this or don't want to do it is inaccurate. Uh, I think what you just said is this year club disagrees with your other guests. That if you if you remove the fire, the fire do, if you remove the fuel, the fire doesn't stand as great a chance. Uh, the Sierra Club is being marginally responsible here and saying that homeowners should be allowed to do certain things. We ought to do even more. Remember, if the federal government is the landowner or the state, then they should also allow. M slightly wider fire breaks clear the fuel, the chaparral, which I know some people want to protect at all costs, but they should allow clearing fire breaks, and that has well, been the question proven is how much you under clear? our laws let to be feeding these fires out. Rick, let me go to you on that and ask you if indeed that, you do disagree with the Sierra Club, and should there be limited clearing, at least in communities, in populated areas where the communities would be affected by these fires? You've got to do strategic fuel breaks and to clear the vegetation around homes. Nobody's questioning that. But you what said if you had nothing hold to on, do with let it. Rick, let Rick no, 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 no. What we're questioning is wholesale control burning out into the wild landscape. Look, a lot of these homes, they burn from embers. Embers can travel up to a mile away. Do you want to pave the entire wild lands? I don't think that's an environment we want to live in. You've got to make structures what? fireproof. You can't put them in fire corridors. You get a flammable house and a flammable corridor, it's all like a bowling alley. Eventually it's going to be taken out. And until developers and politicians understand that and stop putting our firefighters and our homeowners at risk by putting homes in very violently dangerous areas, we're not even getting close to solve this problem. You probably agree there, with that. Uh, I know his home is there. I know that what he's saying is if you choose to swim in the ocean and the shark comes after you, in this case the fire, you really can't defend yourself because after all you're swimming in his backyard. In fact, they're chumming the water here with, with these the policies. Chainsaw. Uh, right, sir, you built your house next to this, and you're saying other people shouldn't. That's a very elite environmentalist no, no, attitude. I've got mine. It's a very nice ago. European attitude. Right, you I've want to got respond mine. to that charge, other people shouldn't is that be allowed to. You have one standard for you. Is that an accurate charge? you want to respond to that? Do you back up to this chaparral? Rick, please respond. Do you back up to the chaparral? I am within uh, the wildland urban interface, and I stayed at my home to defend it, and as did many of my neighbors. And in fact, we were able to save a number of homes by being able to put out the ember fires, which were very small little entities when they start, instead of allowing them to become bigger. And that's how communities respond in an effective manner. All right, guys, we've got to run. We thank Chris. We thank you. We thank you, guys. We've got to break it off right there. Coming up.